Hey folks, it's Brian here and I'm going to do another truck project on my 2017 Nissan Frontier. This is an SV model and for whatever reason, with the four cylinder engine and the package it was ordered with, it never had a backup camera installed. So, you know, it wasn't really a big deal until I put this truck topper on. And I bought this a couple months ago for $300. It was a great deal on a used truck topper, but now I really can't see what's behind me when I'm backing up. So, today, I'm going to install a backup camera. Up here, or here, somewhere, I don't know, we'll figure it out. Um, but let Okay, so, the first thing you need is, um, if you have a, a radio that has XM uh, satellite service, then you've got the right radio, it, it can support a backup camera is what I'm told, and you need this access integrated wiring harness and what this wiring harness does is it brings out the pins for the camera to connect to. You're going to need some kind of wire loom to protect the wires from the underside of the road. I, I bought this on eBay. Cheap cheap. This was an eBay purchase. I want to say it was 17 or $20. I don't know. It wasn't much. And then I went on Amazon and I found a camera that had good reviews that I thought would do the trick. <clears throat> it has some instructions, it has a camera, and I wanted one that could surface mount because that gives me the ability to put it up here where I want it, screw it into the thing, and move on. And then it came with some wiring, uh, there's a license plate bracket that I won't be using. In fact, we're going to speed this whole license plate thing up along with whatever other little nonsense things were in there, and we're going to just send this to recycling. So let's see how long this cable is. 26-foot cable. Uh, if you buy one with a 20-foot cable, my understanding is from here to the dashboard is 19 feet 11 inches. So I bought one's 26 because I want to take the long way up top. And... Um, that's cute, I guess. I don't know what that is. So we're going to figure all this out, and I'm going to do this video. Um, it gets dark in about an hour. We'll see how far I can get with it today. I think that's recyclable. If it's not, it is now. And uh, we're going to get it on. Again, I don't know what some of this stuff does. You know, these things are just irritating. There it goes. Good riddance. Now, it's really important. Um, you set the features of the camera by trimming these loops. Don't do that until you have it hooked up. Oh, that's nice. It comes with a uh, little watchmer collar. I think. Yeah, that's, that's going to be about right. We want that up there. In fact, probably want that right there. So, uh, wow, that's a really teeny tiny ass connector. So that's what that does. Um, yeah, that's real easy to damage, so be really careful with that. And that breaks out. I'm guessing this is power for the camera as well as um, the video and... The red line is probably your reverse signal that you send to the cab. Let's let's kind of read through this and see. Oh, that's nice. It, it un, unwinds after sales service. Please, please email godhelpme at imscrewed.com. No, that's not really what it says. Um, I think this deserves the good reviews. The instructions seem to be written in first-person English. Uh, first, concern, confirm that your car has a $20 bill acceptor. If you're connecting this to your factory radio, say a prayer and sacrifice a small animal that is helpless. Make sure your car has working voltage that is 12 volts. Okay, it's Chinglish. Uh, use the connection cables provided in the package or there will be bad weather and bad omens. Uh, the default output of the camera is HD, which stands for helplessly dead. 
It can be switched to ADHD by cutting the cable before switching to ADHD. Please confirm with your doctor whether you can get the medicine you'll need. This rear view camera includes two brackets. One is completely useless and the other is completely useless when attached to the license plate. If you don't know enough about the car, it would be better to kiss your ass goodbye and hire someone who will take your money and do bad things to your car. Exception handling. If the screen on the image is blurry, clean your glasses. If it's still blurry, clean the screen. If it's still blurry, try the camera lens. I'm making some of this up as we go along. If you use the small mounting bracket, you better attach it with screws. Display modes. Yeah, here's what cutting the different wires do. Naughty, 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 naughty. Thank you for purchasing your product. We're enjoying your money somewhere on a sunny beach. There are too many current, different kinds of cars on the market, so you're on your own. We hope you're satisfied and will leave us a five-star review, despite the fact that we're probably not going to do squat to help you. Yours truly, Shenzhen Delight Electronics, enjoying a sunny beach somewhere in Shenzhen, China. Thank you so much for your contribution, foolish white man. Yeah. Um, so let's see, what does it really say? Uh, order a harness if you're connecting it to a factory radio. Um, you might need a programmer. If you don't know what you're doing, hire someone. Make sure the car is 12 volts, or at least you're connecting this to 12 volts. Use the connection cables provided in the package and don't use other brands because it's not our problem and bad things will happen to your camera. You can buy popcorn for this show at your local Walmart, Costco, Sam's, or Target. Um, yeah, so this is for the trigger wire, also known as the reverse wire. And, yep, we'll set that in its appropriate place. We'll go ahead and strip this down. And that's recyclable. This is not. So this is going to go in the front where we attempt to take apart the dashboard and get magic to happen. So we'll go ahead and put it up front. And um, let me pop my head under the truck and see where, how this is going to work. Okay, apparently uh, you didn't get to see me screw this in or drill it because the Insta360 interface sucks ass. Alright, so we'll just go ahead and proceed to run this tiny little connector through here. And then the action moves inside where it will be more fun than a barrel of monkeys. And that needs to be sealed, so let me see if I can find something to sacrifice. I mean, put there. Okay, so apparently this ultra clear sealant only dries while you're watching it. Uh, I threw it in the trash last night and nothing happened. And so the primary purpose of this is not to keep water out. I couldn't care less if it gets wet. The primary purpose of this is to keep the cable from shorting itself out. And in, you know, 20 minutes or so while I'm watching, it will completely dry. In the meanwhile, I'm going to uh, zip tie it. So let me get some zip ties. All right, and in a pure, clear indicator that this is a valuable project, it has decided to rain. Because anytime I try to do something that I've been putting off for some time, it rains. Nice try. I'm not stopping. I might be salty, but I'm not going to melt. I'm sure some of you at home are watching and going, hey, I would do this differently. Great, do it differently on your project. Keep that comment to yourself. I couldn't care less. I'm doing it this way on my truck.
are those special supplies? deal on these. Yes, I think it's going to rain more. Alright, yeah, that's been waiting a while, so now that, that part is done. Alright, so, this will have to be secured some other way. And unfortunately, it looks like it's going to rain enough that I have to stop working on this project for now. So, yeah, that's what's about to happen. How irritating. Alright, well, thanks for watching, kids. Alright, friends, so I'm going to try and finish installing this uh, backup camera up here. So I got it mounted, got it waterproofed. Um, last time I did this, it started raining. That really sucked. So we're gonna see if we can make it rain again today. No, seriously, I think we'll get further. So the next thing that needs to happen is I need to take this tail light out so I go through here to get under the truck. I'm also gonna pick up my reverse sensor there. And so I'm going to take the screws out to get that free, and uh, that's what I'm going to work on right now. It's a little bit of work to not drop these screws. gets in the way. Um, if you do drop them, they'll fall out to the ground usually. Except for that one. That one went. Alright, let me look for it. flashlight and work more.
I'm not comfortable sticking my finger in there without a glove on. screw and dirty concrete hard to find waste of the glove now if you're wondering why I don't want to stick my finger in there real easy it's a great place for Spiders and other bugs like to hang out in places like that. So this is a really delicate connector. All right, and now that we've got that together, I'm going to zip tie it to protect it because this is way more cord than I need up here. So now that we have that attached, these wires need to pass through, and then we also need to bring this wire in. So I'm going to bring this wire in from the other side. And first things first, I'm going to untangle it. So I'll be right back. Alright, so there are some extra holes in this assembly, and that's what I'm going to use to pass this wire through. And then I'm going to figure out approximately how much we need.
fast came of where did we leave it? Uh, where? Oh, there it is. So I'm using split loom. I'm normally not a huge fan of split loom, but it'll actually do really good in this case. If there's a trick to this stuff, I've never figured out what it is. got the wire protected. I'm going to go ahead and secure the split loom to itself with a little bit of tape. I'm not taping the wire at this point. This just prevents the split loom from opening. So one little piece there, a little piece here. All right, and that'll let us pass this. this here and again we're going to zip tie all this so it takes the stress off the connectors to pick up reverse. <laughs> Let me look at the wiring diagram. I'll be back in a minute. Okay, so it's really important to protect the wire where it goes through here and Heat shrink tubing with adhesive is the right way to do it. You want to use the smallest piece that'll fit. This is just, you know, standard Harbor Freight tubing. It will work just fine. So I want to insert it into here where it's going to be 
in the final installed position. And then I'm going to pull it back through. Taking care not to move it very much. Got a little heat shrink gun. Put it on high. I'll just come in here and heat shrink it. If you do much heat shrink tubing, this is really worth the investment. And you do need to hit it from all sides. Uh, it shrinks where it's heated. And that's all there is to that. Now we'll pull it back through. And we've got a nice heat shrink tube. So I'm gonna I'm gonna put a zip tie here to secure it on the inside. Because I don't want it to move. Okay. Then the unpleasant part is I need to enclose all this wire. Uh, let me pull it back through where it needs to be. So I pulled this through and now what I need to do is put the rest of it in um, split loom to protect it and I'm going to go ahead and put a piece of tape on the wire and the split loom and what this will do is secure it so it doesn't shift all right so I'm not going to film this because it's going to be slow and boring so I'll be back in a bit sure enough as soon as I start to work on the truck it rains, but the hell with it. I'm salty, but I won't melt. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm feeding this through where the uh, truck's wiring harness goes. So that's a good safe place to run the wire. And then we're gonna use some more zip ties to secure this, and I'll be right back. Let me go get something. I'll be right back. All right, so uh, I crawled under here to run this wire, and I realized I'd forgotten a flashlight down here, and I don't know how many thousand miles. I don't remember what the last time I was under here that I would have stuck a flashlight to here was, except maybe this trailer wire, and good God, that's been years. I mean, at least a year, maybe two. So I think I left this down here a couple of years ago, and I'm just shocked that the magnet held it on that spot, and it never fell off. That's amazing. Anyway, so let's, let's go ahead and 
thread this through here. It rained again, so I'm going to get wet, which I'd rather not do with cold water. And I'm going to go ahead and thread this through to the next destination to get it kind of out of my way a little bit. Let me get some zip ties and I'll be right back. So I'm going to set the zip tie up and then I'm going to kind of slide it up where I want it. So this is going to take me basically to the shock mount back here. And now we're going to clean up the tails. All right, so next we need to figure out uh, what our next move is. Jump over the axle here.
Alright, so... Up here by the uh, axle and the, re the cross member is just difficult to get your hands into. You are going to get dirty. But I don't think it takes a whole bunch of zip ties either. And I'm largely just sticking to the factory wiring loom. I figure it's run where it's run for a reason. And that there are some lessons learned there. Okay. Oh, well, I missed that one. Like, completely missed that one. So that's a risk that when you run the wiring, you'll uh, miss the wire you're trying to secure with the zip tie. I'm not even going to bother to remove the zip tie that shouldn't be there. I'm just going to add another one. There we go. Alright, so now I need to shift up here and figure out what I want to do next. Um, So let's see how this goes. I do not have a whole lot of space down here. So I need to decide where I want to go from here. Um, one of my options is there is a plug on the back head of the bulk, back of the, of the cab, and that would be a really good spot to enter, but I can't seem to get to it from the inside. Uh, let me stop and see how hard that is to get to.
right, so I've decided I'm going to run along the uh, frame rail on the driver's side. Uh, there's some fuel lines that I can attach to it. If it's cool enough for fuel lines, it'll be okay for a video. It's a little bit challenging to get in here access wise but I only have to do this a couple times so I think it's tolerable This would be substantially easier on a lift or with the vehicle higher up. But this is a Nissan Frontier, and yeah. And a helper would really speed things up. <laughs> that was stupid. Before I get, I forget, I'm going to take the flashlight out. It just wants to tuck under the fuel line, so I can't quite grab it, which is really irritating. There we go. 
Can't reach over the fuel tank. Right, really needs to be secured between the cab and the body. Let me see what kind of cuss words I can invent on this project. So I'm putting this zip tie together with one hand and my eyes closed. Nope, not that time I'm not. Nope. Okay.
sabes. All right, let's just stop right there. You guys get the idea, this is a pain in the ass to do. All right, so there's a large grommet back here, but to get through all this stuff back here, I'm just gonna use a fish stick and a little piece of tape, which gets me up into here. And let me check to make sure I didn't kink anything. All right. That looks good. Let me work on securing this and I'll be back. 
So this is one of these moments when I get to use one of these tools that I've bought and just don't get to use that much. And I'm going to use it to drill a hole in this rubber bulkhead. And I've already looked on the other side. I'm using a half inch bit. it gets stuck because it grabbed the rubber and twisted it. Alright, let's see if that got enough. It did not go through. But it did pull the grommet out of the hole. I don't know why there's a funnel here. If it's nasty, it's gonna get recycled. So Try it again. to damage it enough next to the wires that I can get a finger through it. problem is I can't see it and I can't pull it out to actually look at it. Finally got it through here. Let me look on it from the other side.
Oh, Jesus Christ, what a pain in the ass. Split limb, uh, what didn't go through. In fact, the split limb disintegrated. Which is fine, because to be honest, the split limb is not needed under the dash. So we're going to take the split loom apart. Alright, we'll pick this up in a second. Alright, I uh, just shortened the wire loom and I'm going to zip tie it to the, the factory wire loom here. And uh, I expanded my vocabulary of cuss words by a few cuss words. Because this is just a difficult spot to access. Unless you have child hands. Just functions as a little strain relief. All right, back in a minute. Okay, so access to this back of the radio is really not intuitive. There's a screw at the top and two screws on little metal brackets, and then you have to pull like you're trying to steal it. I'm not kidding. And when you do, the whole stack will come loose. And that's what we want to accomplish. So um, at this point, we have access to the back of the radio, which you probably can't see, so I'm going to move this. All right. And with access to the back of the radio, because this just pulls straight out, now we can get to this connector that we need to work on, and we can also route the cable from underneath the driver's side. So that's what I'm going to work on. I can't really film routing the cable, so I'm just going to do it, and I'll be back in a bit.
Okay, so if this was not a 360 camera, I absolutely would not be able to film any of this. But because it's a 360 camera, I probably can, so I'm going to try. It's exceptionally difficult to work under here, but it is what it is. Oh, it's almost enough to make you cry because this is a real pain in the ass to do with one hand. I'll eventually get it or I'll end up cussing a whole lot. Okay, so I'm going to cheat a little bit, and I'm going to pull the cable up out of my way. So it's real important that the cable be out of the way of sharp stuff and mechanical stuff. How did that happen? I think I'm going to take this front panel off because I think it'll make my life a lot easier. Again, no, oh, it's not going to come off. It's uh, behind all this other trim that I don't want to touch. I'm sure that saves somebody three seconds during assembly.
Be a lot easier if the seat was out but again i'm not in the mood to mess with that either So I'm just going to continue messing with this one-handed. And it feels like it wants to rain again. All right. So that looks like a good place to put a zip tie. smart. Son of a bitch. <sighs> I think one of the more important things you can do is do this on a day when you don't have anything else going on and you're not irritated because this is definitely going to run your blood pressure and your aggravation levels up. And I'm being particularly careful to 
keep the wires out of where my feet go and out of the mechanical spaces. The last thing I want is the wires tangled up while I'm driving. All right. Let me wiggle out of here and grab that. So, I'm going to get a longer zip tie. You gotta be kidding me. Nope, I'm not. Oh, damn it. All right, well, we'll just zip tie it here on the back of the radio harness. Uh, Nissan didn't leave me <coughs> so much as a fraction of an inch for this. All right, so this is the one. It unplugs. Or not. Well, that seems long enough. There sure aren't that many wires on here. All right. 
circuit. So this one's the one that gets power. And those two just need to be joined together. So we're going to make a crude field joint here. And then I got to go do some work in the back. All right, so I got to work fast because uh, this Insta360 overheats pretty quickly. So I'm going to use these taps to get into the power. Uh, let's see if these will work right. Maybe not this tap. I guess it would help if I used them correctly. So, <sighs> all right, these suck. There we go, got one. And two. Okay, so the other connectors were pieces of trash. These aren't a ton better, but they're at least better. The trick with these is keeping them in their lanes uh, so that the little splicer piece comes down where it's supposed to. All right, I think that worked. Uh, I got another splice to make on the inside. I'm not going to video that. All right, so I changed my mind and decided I would video this. Uh, so I had to cut the wires apart because they didn't have enough snap to leave them disconnected. And then we're going to trim this because we're not going to make that kind of connection. This really should be red, but the blue ones will work. And red because it would be a smaller gauge wire the connector was intended for. 
So when you take your hands off these, you need to make sure everything lines up again, or you may have a failed connection, which will waste one of these. Uh, at one point, this was a Scotch band product, and they were kind of expensive. They've since fallen out of patent, and well, anybody can make it. So let's see if it works. So we don't need to start it. Got a reverse light, but I don't have a camera. Oh, I didn't make the connection up here. So let's uh, turn it off and do that. That might be why it's not working. So, I don't trust that, so I'm going to clip it and make my own connection that I believe is clean. So I bought myself a really nice wire fly set off of Amazon for this project and others so I could make clean splices. I even broke down and bought their connectors because at the end of the day, the connectors really aren't that expensive and I just need the shit to work. Well, where the fuck did it go? There it is. All right. Damn it. That's what I hate about working with these in tight spaces. There's just not a nice way to do it. And what inevitably happens is what you just saw, where you don't make the connection and you waste a connector. Okay, so we got a good connection there. And so we're going to put this one in and get a good connection here. And I'm not going to bother to heat shrink this because this is not a moist location. But it sure does make nice connections. So let's see if it works now that it's actually wired. The trick here is when I put it in reverse, I should get a picture. And I'm not getting a picture. Got a reverse light. Let me go see what's going on back there. All right, so I've got it in accessory and I'm gonna shift into park. Um, it is upside down right now. I, and there's an extra set of lines, so I gotta find the instructions and make some adjustments. Um, not a big deal. Um, I did have some connection problems. The splices that I was using were pieces of shit. Let me show you what's going on with that. So ultimately, I ended up having to, I, I broke the blue wire, so I ended up having to twist it together and then I soldered it because I don't trust any other kind of connection um, on, I mean, 
reverse lights are critical. They just need to work. So that's where we're at. And um, could use some liquid electrical tape, but this will work just fine. It doesn't need to be this much. And I did add some wire to it. I didn't. I didn't want to run the risk of having it be too short and put stress on it because that'll destroy the the joint. That looks good. Um, and I am using a quality 3M uh, electrical tape. Uh, I think a quality tape is always a good idea. And then we'll build in a little stress relief there. And that should be good for the life of me owning the vehicle. And then we just need to protect the ground. I don't know what we're afraid it'll short to, but it isn't going to hurt anything to wrap the joint. Soldering can be a little brittle, so it's not my first choice for vehicles, but it will work in this instance. It looks like I need to trim something. So I have a wire tie that didn't get trimmed. And then at this point, we can just put that back together and it's not very pretty but it, it should be just fine and we're actually I'm actually gonna do some other projects so I'm gonna leave it apart for right now let me show you what's got to happen inside so again I've got another splice here and I'm gonna wrap this and uh, this is gonna be a little bit tricky I'm just going to go ahead and go around all the wires. Um, that's not my preference for how to do this, but it will work just fine. And um, remember, these are all going to get zip tied together anyway. So uh, that completes it. I need to turn the camera around. Um, this is fairly easy to take this screw and this screw off, flip the camera over, and that should fix that. And then these wires here, I need to find the instructions because these tell me one of these wires is the lines, one's the reverse, and one is uh, high quality mode. So worst case, I'll cut them and splice them, but that's not how I prefer to do things. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. And uh, be sure to check out the comments for the items that I used on this video if you want to do this for your 2017 Nissan Frontier that did not have a backup camera and you want one.